What is exposure? In photography, exposure refers to the amount of light let into a camera's sensor. The more light let into the sensor, the higher its exposure is, resulting in a brighter image. So how can we control exposure while still capturing our desired image? Hi, I'm Michael from Messenger Bag Media, and today I'm going to go through some of the basics on controlling exposure and how to achieve equivalent exposures to ensure you can get your desired look while being properly exposed. To begin, it's important to understand how light is measured. On a camera sensor, light is measured in terms of full stops. A full stop of light added to or removed from an image represents the doubling or halving of the amount of light hitting the sensor. You can check your exposure using the light meter in the viewfinder of your camera. Using a digital camera, we have three main levers to pull that allow us to adjust our exposure. Aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Let's go through each, their effect on an image, and how they adjust exposure. Aperture refers to the opening in the camera lens which light passes through. The camera aperture can open wide and close super narrow, changing how much light is let into the camera's sensor. Aperture is measured in f-stops. The smaller the f number, the wider the aperture and the more light that reaches the sensor. Full stop intervals in aperture are f1.4, f2.0, f2.8, f4.0, f5.6, f8.0, f11, f16, and f22. However, many lenses can increase or decrease aperture in half or even third stops. A larger aperture, like f1.8 for example, will not only let in more light, but will also result in a more shallow depth of field. A smaller aperture, such as f16 for example, will let in much less light and result in a wider depth of field, keeping almost everything in frame sharp. Shutter speed refers to the length of time the shutter covering the camera sensor is open for when capturing an image. The longer the shutter is open, the more light is let into the camera's sensor. Shutter speed is measured in fractions of a second, for example, 1 100th, which means the shutter is open for 1 100th of a second. The higher the denominator, the faster the shutter speed, and the lower the exposure. The lower the denominator, the lower the shutter speed, and the higher the exposure. The shutter speed also affects the image in other ways. The longer your shutter is open, the more susceptible your image is to motion blur. You've probably seen long exposure photography and light paintings. These images are made possible by strategically keeping the shutter open for multiple seconds at a time. Motion blur, however, is a product of having a subject moving faster than the amount of time it takes to open and close the shutter. If the subject moves while the shutter is open, it will create a ghosting effect. ISO refers to the sensitivity of the camera's sensor to light. It does not adjust the actual amount of light hitting the sensor, but controls how it reacts to the light that hits it. Think of ISO as a last resort when adjusting exposure. It should only be adjusted when you cannot or do not wish to change your aperture or shutter speed. Check out this image, which was taken with an ISO of 100. As you can see, the image is clean and sharp. Now see this image taken at ISO 400. The image is still very clean and sharp, but it's a bit better exposed. And now look at this one taken at ISO 25600. Obviously this is a big jump, but it demonstrates how a high ISO can introduce a significant amount of noise into an image, making it essentially unusable. As we've learned, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO are all tools at our disposal to control exposure. However, each function has effects on the final image output beyond just how bright it is. Aperture changes how shallow the depth of field is. Shutter speed changes how motion is captured, and ISO influences the quality of the image. Different combinations of these three controls can be strategically used to capture purposeful and stylistic images, and understanding how to achieve an equivalent exposure will ensure you capture your desired image at a proper exposure. So what is equivalent exposure? This refers to changing the settings on a camera to compensate for a desired aesthetic look while still maintaining an equivalent exposure. For example, let's say my image is properly exposed with an f11 aperture, a shutter speed of 1 60th, and ISO 1600. The image is perfectly exposed, but I'm hoping to have a more shallow depth of field. To achieve this, I open the aperture to f2.8, which is four stops brighter than f11. 
This means that my image is now four stops overexposed. To achieve a proper equivalent exposure to my last image, I would need to either have a faster shutter speed, lower my ISO, or both. In this case, my ISO is a bit high, so I'll lower it four stops from ISO 1600 to ISO 100. Now my image is properly exposed again. I notice, however, that at 1 60th, I am getting a bit of motion blur in my image. So I increase the shutter speed up to 1 500th of a second, which is now three stops darker. Now the motion blur, while still showing motion, is less drastic, but my image is three stops underexposed. To compensate for this, I can either increase my ISO or my aperture. I'd like to keep the shallow depth of field, so I'll increase my ISO up from 100 by three stops to ISO 800, which still gives me a relatively clean image. Now my image is properly exposed and much more to my aesthetic liking. Now you might be thinking, Michael, this all seems very complicated. How can I remember which setting equals an equivalent exposure? To download a free equivalent exposure guide, visit our website at messengerbagmedia.ca. There, you'll find a free PDF download you can print with you and keep in your back pocket on your next photography gig. I hope you found this quick overview of camera exposure tools and equivalent exposures useful. If you're looking for tips and tricks to improve your photography, videography, and graphic design skills, check out our channel. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. Perhaps your media needs are greater than you can manage on your own. Messenger Bag Media is your one-stop media shop. We serve businesses large and small for all communication needs. Visit messengerbagmedia.ca. Reach out to us and let's create something amazing together. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.